The biological approach accounts for aggression in several ways, including evolution, genetics, neurochemistry and neuroanatomy. Evolutionary psychologists suggest that aggressive behaviours result from genome lag. This means that the environment changes faster than our genes can adapt through natural selection, leaving us with behaviours that are no longer necessary in modern life. For example, the idea that men are sexually jealous may be explained through genome lag. During the environment of evolutionary adaptation for men, sexual jealousy was a useful characteristic as it ensured successful reproduction. They used instrumental aggression as a way of preventing a partner from having contact with other males. These aggressive actions are called mate retention strategies and still exist in the modern day. This might include direct guarding, which involves aggressive actions such as monitoring a partner's phone, preventing them from going out, and physical violence. Another example is negative inducements, these are essentially threats of violence or other consequences for certain behaviours. Although society has changed rapidly and these behaviours are no longer considered necessary or acceptable, evolutionary psychologists suggest that these behaviours still exist due to genome lag. Our genes and therefore our characteristics and behaviours are outdated. Neuroanatomy can also be used to account for aggression through the concept of localization of brain function. This is the idea that different parts of the brain control different functions, so certain parts of the brain have been linked to aggressive behaviour. For example, the amygdala plays an important role in assessing and responding to threats. Therefore, imbalance or overactivity in this area may increase risk perception, resulting in aggressive responses to potential threats. Another part of the brain that has been linked to aggression is the orbitofrontal cortex. This part of the brain is involved in rational thinking and impulse control. Therefore, if this part of the brain doesn't function properly, it's difficult for a person to control their impulses, including aggressive impulses. This links quite closely with neurochemistry, as the level of neurotransmitters in these parts of the brain can also impact their function. For example, serotonin levels in the orbitofrontal cortex are involved in self-control, so an imbalance of serotonin can impact a person's ability to control their impulses, including aggression. Another neurotransmitter that is linked to aggression is dopamine. Dopamine helps to regulate our motivation and respond to rewards. However, it also interacts with serotonin to increase aggression. When there is a decrease in serotonin and an increase in dopamine, the orbitofrontal cortex not only struggles to control impulses, but impulsivity is actually increased. Testosterone has also been linked to aggression through numerous studies. For example, Debs and Hargrove found a correlation between testosterone levels and violence in female prisoners. Finally, whilst no single gene can be said to be solely responsible for any particular behaviour, the MAOA gene has been linked to aggression. This gene essentially mops up excess neurotransmitters after brain activity, therefore causing imbalances in serotonin, which, as previously mentioned, is linked to impulse control and therefore aggression.